Thank you very much, Bill. And thank you all for attending this morning and being part of this. I, I've actually done a little research and looked at some of the videos that you guys have done in the past. And it's, it's very interesting and very enlightening. And I think it's a great uh, way for the public to learn more about uh, each different group and each different person. So thank you for having me. Um, I thought it was important. Uh, I'm finishing up almost my first 100 days in office uh, to steal something from the president, uh, I thought, and the governor. I thought it was important to kind of update you on how important the work that the county legislature does and what we've done. And a lot of it hasn't been um, very well communicated publicly in the papers or by us, the legislature. And that's one of the things that we're working on is a better engagement with the public to show how much you know that we've done. For example, did anybody here know that we just uh, approved uh, in February $100 million improvements uh, to our sewer system? You didn't read it in the paper or you didn't see it online or you didn't see it in social media. It wasn't very well communicated, but, and, and those projects help with the White Plains projects. They help with 81. They help with a new process of drying waste and saving money for the taxpayers. Uh, upgrades to downtown Syracuse so that when we do the 81 project, it's ready to go and we're not holding up the 81 project in downtown Syracuse. So there's a lot of things that I think that the county government does that the public doesn't know that they do. And that's why I thought it was important. And I appreciate Bill reaching out to me many times on email uh, to be part of this. Um, you know, in January, just to give you an update, in January is the organizational, and I'm new to county government. Uh, as he said, I've been the mayor since 2004. I was a trustee for eight years. Uh, I'm the president of the Onondaga County Mayor's Association, so I'm very comfortable in the village government setting. Um, I understand the do's and the don'ts and what works and what doesn't work, and uh, working with the villages of Manlius and villages of Manoa and the town of Manlius, I'm pretty familiar with how that works. County government was completely new to me. Uh, learning the what to do, what they do, how they do it. Um, but the more I learned, the more I interviewed people, the more I've talked to department heads, the more I realized that they're part of our lives, whether we know it or not, in every resident in our county, whether that's social services, uh, the, the zoo, OCC, uh, Office of Emergency Management, public health, you know, you name it, they're involved in it. And there's a lot of things, the D Department of Transportation, the parks, I could go on and on and on. It's a $1.4 billion budget with you know over 3,000 employees. So it's a big organization, but it's also an organization that's focused on helping the residents of Onondaga County, uh, including the city of Syracuse. So I thought it was important to try to learn more about it. And so January is really just the organizational meeting. It's when the county legislature comes together, they pick their chairman, they pick their uh, majority leaders for each side of the, the Republican and Democrat side, and then you get uh, committee assignments. Uh, and that's all done in January. So it's really their organizational meeting. Uh, I am the chairman of public safety. Um, Bill didn't mention it, but I've been a, a member of the faithful fire department since 1981. Um, rose to the ranks from a junior firefighter all the way to battalion chief. Um, and then I decided to go to a life membership, but I'm still there every day, uh, very active in the, in the faithful fire department. So EMS and fire service with, with the police is something that is important to me. I think public safety is the number one thing that government does. Uh, we have to respond to calls. We have to make sure we're trained. We have to make sure we're staffed. We have to make sure we have the best equipment because in your time of need, we wanna make sure that we take care of everything um, and, and do it the best we can, the best trained. So that's one of the things that I was very proud to get uh, to become the public chairman uh, of public, the chairman of public safety. Then I'm also on Ways and Means. And Ways and Means is kind of a, a little catch-all. It's everything that happens at the county government um, pretty much goes through Ways and Means to make sure that there's a, a um, you know, process that's been filed. There's money to, to, to pay for it, um, that it's been vetted properly. Um, so it's been very interesting. So that January was just kind of everybody knowing where they're going to be, what they're going to do for the following year. In February, we started to really get into some some you know simple things, but important things. Um, we just uh, approved two hundred fifty thousand dollars from the room occupancy tax, and they call it ROT, R O T, um, to help visit Syracuse, bring in more tourism and business. The biggest thing, if you watch the county executives, state of the county, um, tourism and the hospitality industry has been crushed uh, by the pandemic, and we're trying to do everything we can to get more money back to the hotels and to the tourism side of it, to bring people here to help with 
uh, all these businesses and restaurants and, and convention centers and things that need our help and our support. So that $250,000 came out of the ROT fund. And that ROT fund is made up of money that when you stay in a, in a hotel, that tax money goes into a fund. And that fund is then dispersed throughout the county for different programs. We used just recently some of that money for um, concerts and series and art things uh, to bring tourism into the county and to the different municipalities. We accepted state funds to uh, fix uh, Oneida Shores. Uh, the bolt launch there is, is in bad shape and we got a grant to take care of that. Um, we are spending $300,000. I'm going to look at my notes and I apologize. We're spending $300,000 at the Everson Museum to help uh, spruce up their plaza. Uh, we spent $1.5 million on the Pettit Library to create a community room. Uh, they're seeing such growth in the library that they needed more space. We spent $2 million to replace the 40-year-old roost at the Gifford Zoo. Um, we authorized $500,000 to protect the emerald ash borer beetle, not protect, but to eradicate that in um, county-owned trees. Uh, we do that at the Village of Fayetteville, but it's such a smaller level. Last year, we spent $30,000. The county spending $500,000. So they're still similar programs, but they're, you know, the volume of money that the county spends is much different. Um, and then we talked about the upgrades to the Oak Orchard, which will handle the White Plains if we get the chip manufacturer or another manufacturer. That was $30 million. Um, we're, we're changing the way we digest um, debris and solids uh, at our wastewater treatment facilities. Before, they would just let the sludge at the bottom, take it out, truck it, uh, and then take it to a landfill. Now we're going to take it out, bring it to the wastewater facility on, in the city, dry it out, take that dried material, which is less because we're getting all the water and, this, and as much debris out of it as possible, uh, and then to remove that and get rid of that. So our trucking costs are gonna go down, our waste costs are gonna go down, our energy usage is gonna go down, and it's a system that will pay for itself in three to four years. So it's a good improvement for our wastewater. And nobody thinks of wastewater as exciting, but it's important. You need to make sure that the, the toilet's flush, the water goes down the drain that you have water every day. And the county is involved very heavily in WEP and Aqua every day, making sure that we, we have the systems in place and the infrastructure in place to make sure that we do that well. Um, one of the things that came in front of our com my committee at, at Public Safety was the Sheriff's Department is upgrading their portable radios and their mobile radios in their cars. They're about 10 years old. Um, you can't get parts anymore. Uh, they've come to the end of their use of life. Some of them are 13 years old. Um, so we just went through this in the town of Manlius with Kirkville, Fayetteville, Manlius, and Manoa. We all replaced our uh, radios, portable radios and mobile radios through a grant through the federal government. So I'm very familiar with what that was happening uh, at our level was the same thing. So the sheriff's department um, has got like 173 mobile radios and almost 750 portables. So that was $4.6 million uh, to replace those. So we approved that to make sure that our police officers and sheriffs have the right tools. And you know, if something happens, they, can, they know it's gonna work and it's not gonna be a problem. We also um, did a new digita digit digitalized software for the clerk's office that will save you know, taxpayers money and it's a payback in less than a year of $360,000. And we allocated money towards the um, Special Olympics uh, from, from the ROT money. So these are things that we've done uh, in February, you know, not everything that we did, but uh, highlights of the things that we did in February to help the residents in Onondaga County. March, we moved into what they call the clearing time of the budget. So if there's the budget for the county is 1.4 million or billion, and that money, uh, sometimes there's overruns and sometimes there's shortfalls and they have to clean up their accounts because they're year ends. So they're in this clearing up time uh, at the county government. Uh, and at Ways and Means, we went through all those clearing up accounts uh, in the month of March. Um, and what it does is you make sure that where this money is coming from. So if, for instance, the sheriff's department, uh, they were over in overtime, um, but they had enough money in other accounts to pay for that. But the state changed the way they allocate um, reimbursements for underage youth going into uh, detention facilities. They used to pay 50%. Now the state stopped that and they're not paying anything anymore. So that was $2 million that the county was short in their budget because they stopped paying that uh, for that 50% share. So we had to take that money out of another area in the budget. 
So it's things like that that I want to make sure that residents understand. Some of the money that we spend is, 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 is important, but it's also a necessity because of what the state does or doesn't do or the federal government does or doesn't do. Um, social services is a big part of the 1.4 billion. Uh, last last I looked, it was 800 million of the 1.4 billion. So it's a it's a large number of what we spend in the county government for social services. Um, but we even in, in March approved a pilot program with Liverpool Fire Department, and we're now supplying. They're letting them use the county facility to fuel their trucks. So it saves the Liverpool Fire Department from having to build the structure, and then the county government is just get, letting them use our facilities and charging them for the fuel that they use, plus a little bit of an admin fee. Um, all the expenses for the COVID pandemic and the kits and the mask and the, the testing and all the things that we're doing, we're tracking that. Uh, and at the end of the year, we put in a grant to FEMA for $2.95 million to reimburse us for all these expenses that we're paying for at the county level to keep our residents safe. A lot of what's happening right now is working through this pandemic, and we're still in it. And we're still dealing with it every day. Uh, but the county government has done an, a great job with Dr. Gunta and Dan Wears from the emergency management of making sure that we have the kits, the masks, the testing, the sites. Uh, and we see that it's ramping back up and the county is well prepared. I'm actually meeting with Dan after this meeting to discuss what the plans are and what we need to do from a public safety standpoint. Um, we also um, transferred money to help build a new office of emergency management. Right now, they're in the bottom of the Civic Center in the city of Syracuse. It was just um, basically a temporary facility that lasted more than 10 years. Uh, we now own the Army Depot Center off of Electronics Parkway in Liverpool. We're going to be renovating that building and moving everything out. Right now, we store some stuff in the Belgium Cold Springs Fire Department. We store some stuff in Jamesville. We store some stuff in the city. We store some stuff out in, in uh, Belgium's Cold Springs. So now we're going to bring everything under one roof. It's going to create better efficiencies. We own the building. Uh, plus, when all the mayors and town supervisors and people were picking up the test kits, it worked very well going there. It's centrally located. It's easy to get in and out of, uh, but it'll also be a secure facility for our Office of Emergency Management. So that was something that we're doing. Plus, we have um, some vehicles that we're going to be able to move in there and keep everything under one roof. Uh, we also um, rearranged our bonding for the year. Um, so they took all the, the, the debt from the county, shopped it out, and we were able to save one point, I want to make sure I get this right, $1.1 million in savings uh, for our debt uh, with a lower interest rate. So these are all things that the, the um, county government does um, and is doing every day. It's a very well-run organization from the financial side, from the leadership side, from the services that we provide, uh, but it can always be uh, done a little better and a little differently. And I think that's one of the things that I'm trying to do uh, in the legislature um, is connecting those dots. And if you've listened to my podcast, it's People for Olson. Uh, you can go on any pod, uh, Spotify or any type of uh, podcast and you can Apple, you can listen to it. But I interviewed a lot of people at the county level and it was, I was amazed at how much the county government does that people in towns and villages and where we live in the 10th district don't know that we do. So it's very interesting. It's very uh, educating. Um, I'm also making sure that we're connecting those resources to the towns and the villages to help them with their programs that they run. Or, you know, just to give you an example, in the village of Manoa, they just received $900,000 in Main Street grant program. Well, that's great, but now we need to back that up with help with funding, help with resources, help with planning, helping with the, the village be able to progress their Main Street program. Uh, so working with the, the Marty's uh, at the uh, community development, as well as the mayor of the village of Fayetteville, or the mayor of the village of Manoa, we're trying to make sure that we do that uh, to help sure that we connect those dots and make sure he has all the resources. Um, and then, you know, I've been, I'm going to show you a couple of things. There's this document that I think every legislator and every elected leader gets, and it's just a breakdown of all the departments in the town, the villages, the city, the school. Um, it's a great resource. And Bill, I'll make sure you get one of these so you can show the people. But the other things that we're working on, the aquarium, I've got an aquarium thing. 81, I'm getting documents on 81. The county's executive's 2020 budget. There's a new sports complex that's, that's being considered. There's our cap. This is our capital plan for five years. You know, it's close to 156 pages of information. You know, uh, OG against violence. 
um, the sports complex. Um, you know, that, that, that's, you know, all these things are things that legislators have to make decisions on. Um, so I'm studying those, I'm reading those, I'm reviewing those, I'm talking to people. Um, I'm very interested in, one of the things I've learned as mayor is it's not what I want. It's, I, I use the acronym WITTY. What is important to you? What do you want? What do you want to see from your county government? What do you want to, us to do better? What do you want us not to do? What do you want us to do? So I listen a lot and then I ask a lot of questions. Why? Why do we do it this way? Why have we done it this way? Why are we going to do it that way in the future? So I'm asking a lot of those questions and learning more about how the county operates. And the nice thing is it's two separate entities. You've got the, the legislature, which is the 17 of us, and then you've got the administration and that's the 3,500 other employees who are running the day-to-day -day operations of the county government. We're co-equal branches of government. So we have to approve what they do and, and vice versa. So we work very well together, but we also have to be educated and learn uh, exactly what they deal on a daily basis so that we make good decisions and good educated um, things that will help our residents in the future. The other thing that I'm working on, and that's what my meeting is after this, is emergency um, uh, EMS uh, coverage, and I know if you read the article in the city of Syracuse and the paper about the city of Syracuse and ambulances, um, everybody in the Onondaga County right now is struggling with ambulances. We're very fortunate in the town of Manlius that the three mayors and the town supervisors uh, have worked well together, and we focused on this, and we are providing good ambulance coverage. We have seven ambulances in service, twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week in the town of Manlius. So the tenth district is doing a very nice job with this but not all communities are doing that and not all communities are focused on that. We pay for this service in, uh, in, in our 10th district, um, but it's also one of those things when you pick up the phone, you know you're gonna get an ambulance, you know you're gonna get a qualified, trained, staffed ambulance as quickly as possible to your house to help you when, in your time of need. That's important, that's always been important and I think that's one of the things that we wanna take now and say, okay, how can we take it to the county level and where can the county help these struggling agencies, whether it's the city of Syracuse, Baldwinsville, NAVAC, KVAC, SAVAC, uh, Eves, um, and Fayetteville, Manlius, Manoa, is there a different way that the county can help with that? So we're starting that process. It's gonna take a few months. Um, we're also looking at, I wanna move, and I'm trying, it's, it's not something that uh, is gonna happen overnight, but I'm trying to move some of our meetings to at night at the county legislature. We meet at uh, one o'clock on the first Tuesday of the month. That's hard for some people that work, or, or not retired. I'm trying to get that to move till six o'clock at night, maybe three times a year, or can we move it to different parts of the county? So have it in the east, say in Manlius, then go out west in Fairmount, then, you know, go up to the, you know, to Baldsville, you know, move it around the county, you know, and then have one in the city. I just think it would be nice to get out to the residents to showcase what it is that the county legislature does along with the administration. <clears throat> So these and, and many other things, you know, I'm, I'm passionate about providing service. You know, we're, the county's giving out masks and kits and they're sending them to people's homes. On Friday, I got an email from a resident uh, in Manlius who, who got the mask but didn't get the kits. I picked up some kits on Saturday and dropped them off to her house on Sunday. That's what we do. That's what we're here to do and it's provide service. If you listen to my podcast, and I think I saw Bill send them out. That's what it's about. It's about service. It's about connecting the dots. It's about providing county government to our residents. Um, to me, it's not about politics. It's about good government. Uh, and it's always been that way. I want to take a little slice of what the village does uh, to the county uh, to make the county even better. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that the county could learn from the village. And there's a lot of things that the village could learn from the county and blend those in together and make, you know, the 10th district a vibrant and good district. So I've spoken enough. I will be glad to take any questions.